Hi everybody. Hi there. Well, this video um, is going to have a little bit of a long intro, and uh, I hope you forgive me this time. But uh, Sandy Gorge in Wyoming, uh, we stayed on the top of White Mountain overlooking uh, Green River, Wyoming, and what an experience that was. And we made some new friends, and uh, I just want to share it with you, and, and Sandy wants me to share it too. So we're up on top of this mountain, and we're in the middle of nowhere, and I went out exploring one day. She stayed at the trailer. Um, I climbed up to the top of the butte, got some pictures, came back down. On my way back to the trailer, I got, I never saw anybody all day long. Uh, I got a, a flat tire. The rocks up there are extremely sharp. Not just a flat tire. It looks like a knife cut. These rocks are sharp. It, it cut right through. So I have a flat tire on the driver's front. I pull over, I figure no problem. I've got a jack, I've got a four way. Uh, I'll get the hydraulic jack out and we'll take care of it. I did not have the OEM tool that comes with the truck to lower the uh, spare tire down. So I'm laying underneath this truck trying to figure out how to remove the tire without that tool, which is next to impossible and I'm beating around with a hammer. I'm, I'm 15 miles away from the trailer. I haven't seen anybody all day long. And it was a Saturday. And uh, all of a sudden I hear some noise. And here comes this couple in a pickup truck. And they pull over and they said, do you need some help? Where they came from, I have no idea. But uh, I, I told them what the problem was. I need the special tool to lower it. They both get a surprised look on their face that he looks at his wife and says, now I know why I put that in my truck. And she said something about the Lord's work. So he had the tool in the back of his truck that he found in the storage shed and he just figured he'd keep it. And the next day, here it is coming in. We dropped the tire down. Him and I got the tire on the front. He was just so helpful, he wanted to help. He didn't have to, but he did. Uh, I offered him something. I said, well, I don't have any cash with me, but please stop back at the trailer. And they're very familiar with the area. They're locals. He's a Cajun from a transplant from Louisiana. And um, the guy even hands me a beer because he wants me to try a local beer. And Ed hadn't taken anything to drink. And he'd been gone for like two or three hours. Yeah, I didn't take any water or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was not wandering around. I'm not all there. And... Uh, so I, I tell him, thank, I thank him for the help, I beg him to stop back at the trailer, and being in Wyoming, you know, I'm telling him, oh, we're on the top of White Mountain, down about 15 miles overlooking the valley. He knew where I was. And so I took off, and I'm going down the road. I think everything's fine. All of a sudden, the tire monitor is going off saying that the back tire is, is down to 20 pounds. Then it goes off again and says it's down to 19 pounds. I realized wherever I hit that got the flat tire on the front of the driver's side also hit the rear tire on the driver's side. And now I'm losing air there too. Now at the same time I realized that, the tire monitor goes off again and says that the front spare tire that I put on, on the driver's side, it's down to 20 pounds. And then it tells me it's down to 19 pounds. And it's dinging back and forth between the two of them as I'm going along. And I realize I've only gone about a mile. So uh, I realize I'm going to be in this situation every two and a half miles. I'm going to have to pull over and pump everything up with uh, the short bolt air compressor. And I, which he keeps in the truck. Thank which, goodness. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> glad I got that in the truck. So, I'm setting about doing that, and I'm I'm stopping and I'm rinsing and repeating until finally I realize, well, I can't get the rear tire any higher than 15 psi. So okay, that's as good as it goes. The front tire is not losing air as bad. It's either a leak around the valve stem or the rim, but it's not as bad. So I'm bouncing back and forth, and while I'm waiting for the rear tire to fill up about the third time. I pulled my cell phone out, I called up Pandora, got Star Wars music, linked it to the uh, radio in the truck, and took off again, trying to get to the trailer, and you know, why not? Star Wars music's playing, lights are flashing, bells are going <laughs> off. I figured, go out and blaze of glory, you know? And I get to the trailer, she's already alerted there's a problem, and I got there, 
and uh, I tried to rest as much as I could, but of course I'm stopping all the time. Well, I got there, she got everything put away, we put the dog in the truck, we gotta get downtown, we gotta find the tire shop, we got The back tire is flat. And so I'm pumping that up flat. again. And in pulls uh, Peanut and Janice, that's the couple that stopped and helped us, helped us out. They were slowly working down the way down the road because they were out spotting for uh, elk and, and deer uh, for hunting season, the guy hunts. And he, they followed us into town and he stopped behind us. Each time I had to fill the, the tires up, got us to a, a, tra a tire place. We got everything fixed, begged them to come back to the trailer. They did. Uh, I had noticed um, that he drank Bud Light and uh, because he had a trash bag in the back of his truck when I was helping him put things away. A lot of people out in the West, you're responsible for getting your own trash to a sanitary station. So it's not unusual to see somebody who has a little trash bag in the back of the truck. And I spotted that. So Sandy ran in, we got a 12 pack for him. We, we had some beer for ourselves and she could cheer and drink that. But anyway, <laughs> they did show up at the trailer. So we had a great experience with these people. It turns out, long story short, we, we talked about faith. We talked about uh, a lot of different things. We had a lot in common. They invited us out the next day, and they took us to their favorite spots in Flaming Gorge, took us fishing, and then invited us to their home uh, for an authentic Cajun meal of gumbo, gumbo. that he was making. It was fantastic, uh -huh. uh, said Grace, and the man thanked the Lord for bringing new friends into their lives. So it was an amazing experience, and whether you're a believer or not, it, it just, it was overwhelming. It was a great time. We've made new friends. We're still keeping in contact, having moved from there, and uh, it, it's just, it's an amazing experience that you can get only being on the road, and what we hope, what, what, what I'm trying to express, what we want to express is that it's not just traveling and seeing things, it's, it's the people you meet and the, and the friendships that come out that are some of the most fantastic experiences we've ever had in our lives. Having said all that, and I'm sorry I'm so long-winded, I uh, hope you enjoy the video about Flaming Gorge, and uh, you all take care. Bye. See ya. This travel day, takes us from Alcova, Wyoming to Green River, Wyoming. And our travel days always give us the very best scenery. This was just awesome. Our campsite was at the top of White Mountain and the next video after this one will give you more information on this campsite. And this is our view from the top of White Mountain. It's just beautiful. And watching these trains, it, it's unbelievable how long these trains are. It's just one continuous train going out around. Anyway, what an amazing view, huh? Just crazy. Loving this camp spot. Ed found a bunch of informational signs uh, the day that he was driving around White Mountain um, when he got the flat tire. G Green River is only a town of about 12,000 people, but it's got an amazing history, just amazing. Um, this town was a major division point on the Union Pacific Railroad, so they have a huge freight yard downtown. And Green River was the first community in Wyoming to have an electric street light system and was one of the first towns to have women serve on a jury. Although Green River was first founded as a coal mining town, Trona is where it's at these days. Um, Trona was discovered here in 1938 and it became the Trona capital of the world. Um, this is a 
raw material that they use to uh, make soda ash when it's refined. And this soda ash or sodium carbonate is used to make glass, paper, laundry detergents, kitty litter, carpet cleaner, baking soda, and a lot more. And um, there are other deposits that were found in Africa, China, Turkey, and Mexico. Um, but this Green River Basin is the only area where trona is commercially mined. And they have enough trona in this basin to meet the world's needs for another 2,000 years. When the Rocky Mountains were formed about 50 million years ago, um, this entire area of land was underwater with an inland sea called Lake Gojuit. And this lake was about four times the size of the Great Salt Lake. Um, this lake was eventually filled in with volcanic ash from California and Oregon. And so all the plants and animals that were there at the time are preserved in the, the sediments that were left over. This area is also a major transportation corridor where Interstate 80 currently is now. Uh, it used to be part of the Overland Trail back in the 1860s uh, when people were emigrating to the West. Um, of course, the railroad runs through this area, and if you look up into the sky, you can see that there are also a lot of planes um, going east and west. So this is a major air transportation corridor as well. This is also home to the White Mountain Wild Horse Herd. Um, horses in the area can increase their numbers up to 20% a year, and when the herd exceeds the planned population of 250, excess horses are gathered up and removed. And these horses are then made available for adoption through the BLM's Adopt a Horse program. Um, so you can look this up on the BLM website and maybe adopt a wild horse. This is pretty awesome. Pilot Butte is the highest point on White Mountain, and it's visible for 30 miles in all directions. So uh, people who are traveling through the area have been using this as a landmark since prehistoric times. Here's a picture of the flat tire that was on the front driver's side. So the very next day after Ed had the flat tire problem, um, we got up with Peanut and Janice and they offered to show us around uh, the Firehole Canyon section of the Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area. So of course we took them up on that because we've been wanting to see that anyway. We parked our trucks on the edge of the river and Peanut did some fishing, and he also made us an awesome lunch of um, barbecued hamburgers and homemade brats. We had a great time that day. Fun was had by all, except for the puppers. Unfortunately, there was an algae bloom in the water, so General couldn't get in and play. And after lunch, we are off to do more exploring of the Firehole Canyon area. It's very pretty landscape.
the next day, Ed went out with Pina and Janice while they were searching for a game for hunting season. I don't think they saw any deer or elk, but they did come across some wild horses. And the next day, the four of us went to explore the rest of the Flaming Gorge Recreation Area around the southern side um, where the dam is and then back up the west side of the Flaming Gorge. Just amazingly beautiful scenery. It was just awesome.